She jumped all in my ass because I sat up there and said, hey, how you going to ignore Caitlin Clark? And into, but the first order of business is to get started with the WNBA, where the league is making headlines like never before in its 27-year history. There have been three players this season who've been box office. We know about Asia Wilson. Okay, let's get that out the way. Two-time MVP of the Las Vegas Aces, the best player in the world right now. She's about to set a single-season points-per-game scoring record, averaging 27.5 points, y'all. Surpassing Diana Taurasi's 25.3 points per game, set back in 2006. That's one person. The others, you know the names. Angel Reese, the Chicago Sky forward, just set the league record for the most rebounds in a season, surpassing a mark set by Sylvia Fowles in 2018. Reese broke the record in just 32 games, so give her her love and support. And last but not least is, of course, Caitlin Clark who just led the Indiana Fever to an above 500 record for the first time in five years. By the way, she's the second leading scorer at 23.4 points per game over the last 12 games. The Indiana Fever owned the WNBA record for most consecutive games under 500, by the way, with 189 until recently, of course, the other day. Now the team is setting WNBA attendance records with over 500,000 fans over their first 33 games this season. Some have compared Caitlin Clark to Tiger Woods and how she's revolutionized fan engagement in women's basketball. Overall attendance, in case you missed it, is up by 20%, breaking TV viewership ratings and merchandise sales. Either way you slice it, it's clear that we're witnessing a golden era in the sport. Caitlin Clark, what I tell y'all? What I tell y'all? Now I understand there's a whole bunch of people that's balling. How about Cassie Mitchell, a teammate, who is just flat out balling? You see what the ace is doing, right? See, Kels, you, you, you just see this. Plum and the rest of the crew in Las Vegas can't ignore them. I'm looking at the New York Liberty. I'm looking at the you know, Minnesota Lynx. I'm looking at the Connecticut Sun. I'm looking at Seattle. I'm looking at all of these teams. But they ain't the story. Look, we appreciate what they bring to the table, and we appreciate their greatness, and we appreciate what they're giving the fans. But we just have to understand that when a transformational figure enters the fray, you got to pause and then isolate and compartmentalize and give them the love that they do. And in this case, it belongs to Caitlin Clark. Rookie of the year race is over. She ended that Friday night. Not that she wasn't in the league to begin with, but she ended that Friday night when she dropped 31 on the Chicago Sky when they were blowing them out. Okay? She ended that Friday night. Uh, Andrew Reese and the Chicago Sky, who, by the way, in 11-19 and about eight games below 500, even though they still are tied for the seventh seed in the playoffs or what have you. We'll see what happens with that. But Andrew Reese is no longer a rookie of the year potential winner. That's over. It's going to Caitlin Clark. Let's get that out the way. Did you know that Caitlin Clark is also in a conversation for league MVP? Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? I tried to tell y'all. I tried to tell y'all. You understand what I'm saying? We got the babyface assassin in men's basketball with Steph Curry. They might say that about her before all is said and done because she pulls up from the parking lot as well. Okay, this is what Caitlin Clark brings to the table. Here's what I want y'all to know about some of the stats involving her. Average attendance in the 33 games Caitlin Clark and the Indiana Fever have played this season is at 15,746. That leads the WNBA, okay? Average attendance of WNBA games not involving Caitlin Clark is 8,490. So games that Caitlin Clark plays are averaging 85% more than non-Caitlin Clark games. Just throwing that out there. You need to know. You need to understand these are the kind of things that comes with it. Okay? So we got to get that out the way, okay? Then you got the lead, the fever leading the WNBA in, in home attendance, 16,978. Road attendance, 14,838. Indiana is outdrawing every other team by 35% at home and 36% on the road. Okay. We know what she did at the WNBA All-Star game. They averaged, they averaged like 3.4 million viewers on ABC. That, that All-Star. I mean, come on now. This is Caitlin Clark. This is the Caitlin Clark effect. And so it's time for everybody to stand down. It's time for everybody to miss. Stephen A., you were right. You were right, Stephen A. Caitlin Clark should have been on Team USA. Should have been on Team USA. And we also write about the fact that there's been some haterade being thrown in her direction. Okay? Because there's no excuse to have resentment towards her. And see, we don't want to address the big elephant in the room, but we ain't going to run from it today because Cheryl Swoops made news. Now, she made news last week when she sat up there and, and was applauding Indiana Fever players, but then forgot to mention Caitlin Clark. 
She jumped all in my ass because I sat up there and said, hey, how are you going to ignore Caitlin Clark? You know what she brings to the table. How are you just going to ignore her? That's not an accident. Cheryl Swoops is a champion. A champion. Look at her tweet and what she put up about me. You talk about whomever and whatever you want to on your podcast, correct? So why can't I? Also, did you listen to the entire episode? Nope. I have a personal relationship with these players, and they deserve recognition as well. That ain't the point, Cheryl Swoops. Yes, I did listen to your entire podcast. You didn't mention Caitlin Clark. So I was right, number one. Number two, your personal relationship what that got to do with your coverage? Ain't nobody said don't mention them. Ain't nobody said don't applaud them. Nobody told you to ignore them. What we're saying is if you're going to give the Indiana Fever all the credit in the world, how you going to mention the Indiana Fever without Caitlin Clark's name even coming up? So then after that, Cheryl Swoops engages in levels of immaturity. There's no way to slice it. I'm not going to insult this champion, this great basketball mind, this phenomenally accomplished Hall of Famer. I'm not going to insult her. All I'm going to say is it was pretty damn immature to come back at me like that. Called me an effing coward because I called you out for not doing your job. So you got on, you on a podcast that, that means you don't have to do your job. I mean, the bottom line is this. She engaged in a level of immaturity. Let's just call it what it is. I mean, to just to just bite at me like that. Oh, why? Because what did I say? What did I say? You want to know what I said? Take a look at what I said last week about Cheryl Swoops. Respectfully, Cheryl Swoops. You have any idea how that makes you look? You have any idea how that serves to stain any kind of critique of Caitlin Clark because that gives fodder to those who believe she's being hated on and ostracized to some degree. Do you realize that Cheryl Swoops, you're insane to do that? Let me tell you why you're insane to do that. Because Cheryl Swoops, you're one of the greatest players ever in the history of basketball. That's why. See, you won a championship in college at Texas Tech. You won three Olympic gold medals. You won four WNBA championships. You know basketball. You know basketball better than me. You know basketball than any of the pundits. You know basketball better than most of the men that play basketball. There is no way in hell you just accidentally left Caitlin Clark's name out of that soliloquy that you dropped about the Indiana fever. Stop it. You know that. Stop it. I mean, listen, the bottom line is this. There's a whole bunch of reasons. That, that I'm quite sure Cheryl Swoops could come up with. Who can imagine that she's got stuff on her mind? Lord knows what she's got on her mind and what she wants to express. I get all of that. People can speculate until the cows come home about what that is. But one thing that's undeniable is that she seems to get offended with her objectivity being questioned. Her professional objectivity. The problem is she's the one that brought her professional objectivity into focus by her own behavior. What possible excuse could you have? Talking about the Indiana fever and nary a mention of Caitlin Clark. How is that possible? How is that possible? You know what Indiana was before she arrived? You know what the attendance was before she arrived? You know what merchandise sales was before she arrived? You know what attendance was before she arrived? You know what the ratings were before she arrived? How could you not mention her? It makes no sense. So I can understand why Cheryl Swoops would have an attitude with people who would question her professional objectivity. But I also understand why people would look at her like she's lost her ever-loving mind. Because you're literally putting the lack of professional I'll, objectivity. I'm going to say this, and then I want to like be done with this whole conversation. So for people to come at me and say that I made those comments because I'm a racist, like first of all, black people can't be racist. But, like, that's the farthest thing from my mind. Like, I grew up in a very small West Texas town, predominantly white. My best childhood friend is white. Winter, predominantly white. College, won a national championship. Pretty much everyone on the team was white. Like, we're sisters to this day. Like, like that's not a part of my DNA. But for me, it's very important, though, that... Like, I'm a black woman, you know? So it's important for me that I speak up for people that look like me. Like, it's Black History Month. So 
Like our ancestors fought and died for us to have opportunities that we have today. So anytime I have an opportunity to obviously be on the podcast or, or anything where I feel like it's important for me to speak up um, and show support, that's what I want to do. Um, I have like no issues with Caitlin, her breaking the record, I think obviously is a tremendous accomplishment, although, you know, we could get into that discussion also because there was a big debate on Lynette Woodard having yeah. the actual record. Um, but I, I think what Caitlin has done for not just college basketball, but for women's basketball, period, I think has been great. The following, people watching the game, sellouts that we haven't seen ever. Um, it just really bothers me, though, when, when people just take bits and pieces of mm -hmm. what they want to take. <laughs> and they don't listen to everything, and you don't hear everything. Because I do remember me saying that Caitlin, to me, could be the best college shooter I've ever seen, right? Um, so I don't, I don't have any hard feelings towards Caitlin, no hard feelings toward, towards Angel. I, my thing is, when you put these expectations on these young women in college to go to the next level and be immediately dominant. And when that doesn't happen, then people come back and say, oh, she was a bust, she yep. was a flop, she wasn't yep. that good. <clears throat> like, just let them do what they're doing in college, enjoy what they're doing in college, and let them become stars in the WNBA. Like, it's not about me liking you, not liking you, me hating on you. Like, I don't even know how to let those words come out of my mouth, but um, yeah, it was just, it was a lot. But I do, I, and I have to say this before we move on. So to like every single person on social media that like held it down for me, that was like, oh no, we're not doing this. Like I got mad love and respect for all of them for showing up and showing out and making sure that I was good because people were checking on me. Um, and, and I'm very appreciative of that. I, I'm going to say this and then I want to like be done with this whole conversation. So for people to come at me and say that I made those comments because I'm a racist, like first of all, black people can't be racist, but like that's the farthest thing from my mind. Like I grew up in a very small West Texas town, predominantly white. My best childhood friend is white. Winter predominantly Kelsey white. Mitchell has been a star on the Indiana Fever. There is no doubt about that. She has been nothing short of sensational. She's averaging about 19 points per game. She had a big time game yesterday, which you called. And I just wanted to throw this out there just as a reference point, just to put things in perspective about what Caitlin Clark brings to the table. The average attendance in the 33 games Caitlin Clark and the Indiana Fever have played in this season is 15,746, which leads the, the, the WNBA. The average attendance of WNBA games not involving Caitlin Clark is on average 8,490, an 85% drop from games that Caitlin Clark is not participating in. Obviously, the New York Liberty averaged over 11,000. The Los Angeles Sparks averaged over 10,000. But the Indiana Fever at 15,746. Yet, I'm on the air the other day, and I'm talking about the Indiana Fever, and I had to get on, you know, somebody we both have incredible respect for in Cheryl Swoops. Your champion on every level, one of the greatest players in, 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 in WNBA history. Because I said, how do you mention the Indiana Fever and all of these other players and you don't mention Caitlin Clark and then all of a sudden she gets on me and calls me a coward and all of this other stuff. I don't know what you can say about Cheryl Swoops, but if there's anything that you could say, what would you want to say in terms of the narrative that has been put out there as it pertains to her coverage and her feelings about Caitlin Clark? You know, I've known Cheryl since she was in college. I, I helped do her shoe deal with Nike in 1993, took her to her first SBs. Uh, I, I've known Cheryl. I've coached her, have a lot of respect for her. The I, I called her when Caitlin was still playing at Iowa and she had just broken Maravich's record. And it was all over the place, as you and I have uh, discussed, that you know, there was this quote by Cheryl that said, you know, Caitlin was, you know, 25 years old. She was uh, 
however old, 24 years old. She was a fifth year senior. Right. She was taking 40 shots a game. Her records were illegitimate. And I, I got off the treadmill and I called her as a friend. And I said, you know, you can say whatever you want. You can have your own opinion about anybody, but you do have to get the statistics right. I mean, facts matter. And if you just get ahead of this and just say, hey, I made a mistake on my numbers, then this thing is over and everybody respects you for your opinion. And, you know, you might like Boston. I might like the Yankees. You know, it's OK to have difference of opinions. Well, she she got upset with me on the phone. And I was like, Cheryl, you know, I'm not doing anything to hurt you. I'm just sharing. We're, we're talking. And so our relationship it, it pretty much is not happening at this point. I tried to talk to her at the final four. Right. She didn't want to talk to me. Uh, my life's going to be good or great with or without Cheryl Swoops in my life. I'd rather have her in it. But let me tell you the difference. Right. The difference is when the Kennedy Carter thing happened and I'm doing Michelle Beadle's uh, uh, podcast with uh, Lou Williams and Chandler Par Parsons. And Michelle says to me, Nancy, what would you tell Caitlin Clark in that situation? And I said to Michelle, look, I'm not here to speak for Caitlin Clark. You know, Caitlin Clark, I I'm not going to tell you that. Then she said, what would you do if somebody kind of blindsided you like that? And, you know me, I'm straight from New York, straight from Rucker Park. I said, I would have <laughs> yes. gotten up. I would have walked up to whoever did that to me. I would have punched him in the, the face. And, you know, the expletive that I used. And I would have said, yes. you know, F off. That is who I am. That is the concentric circle of who I am. And, and that's my era. And so to her point, Teresa Weatherspoon called me. My dear friend who I love, respect, and admire she said, Nancy, I was disappointed what you said. And we had a, a conversation. And I said, Spoon, I didn't say she should punch Kennedy Carter in her face. I said, this is what I would do if I were blindsided. And, and, and I've known Kennedy since she was in high school here in Dallas. I think she's a hell of a player right. and should have been on the all-star team. She is. But my comment about hitting her wasn't about her. But we had this conversation, which I, we apparently cannot have with me and Cheryl Swoops. And I still think she she mm. was incorrect about what she did. And, you know, we all have to be professional, right? You cover people, right? You and Durant have kind of got, gone at it in and out for a right. little bit, but you still do highlights and talk about them and share yes. the greatness of him. Yeah. You don't have to agree with everything with him, yeah. but just do He's your job. Guy. Do right. your job. You get paid to do a job as a broadcaster. Do your job. Nobody says yeah. you have to be in love with anybody else. But if you're going to do an Indiana yeah. Wings game, you're going to have to talk about Caitlin Clark and her great teammates and what they're doing. And they yeah. have, you know, uh, Aaliyah Boston. They have, you know, Kelsey Mitchell, who's just bananas. I mean, unstoppable, by the yes, way. Yes, she is. And, and, and Caitlin Clark. So why would you not build around it. You know, when I was playing, you would have looked like an idiot if you didn't, when you talked about Old Dominion, you know, two-time national champions and two-time player of the year, well, and you didn't talk about me. You'd look like you're ignorant. And that's the issue. And that's the issue, Nancy, because, I listen, and here's the thing. What incriminates, in my opinion, it's just my opinion, but what incriminates somebody like Cheryl Swoops even more, who, by the way, was supposed to be calling the game with y'all yesterday, and she did not call the game. And no doubt it had something to do with the fact that when, you know, how Caitlin Clark had performed early in the week, she didn't want to talk about it at all. So we recognize that, and we know in television the way that I do. I know what producers do. I know what bosses do when you see, you know, your personal feelings, whatever they may be, infiltrating the proceedings and conversations compromising your position as a professional. But I think in, a, in the case of Cheryl Swoops, and I'm not going to belabor this point, but it's important to be made. Cheryl Swoops is a winner. She was great. And she's a phenomenal yeah. basketball mind. So what she's not realizing is that when she doesn't state the obvious, it's automatically going to be assumed that it's something personal because we know you know the basketball game, the game of basketball too well to ignore the kind of things that she's ignoring when it comes to Caitlin Clark. Am I wrong in saying that?
No, you're, you're, you're not wrong in saying that. And, and I would like to thank the wings and ballets for putting me on the game and asking me if I would do it. I will do anything for women's basketball. I'm just a servant leader here. Uh, at, at one point in my career, I wanted to be the greatest of all time. And now I just want to be a, a great you know, person that supports this generation uh, of, of greatness. So to, to your point, you know, I, I think she created this firestorm. She could put it out. And, you know, it's like I always tell people at this stage, your, your ego is not your amigo. OK, your ego is not your friend. We have to humble ourselves and do our job and just recognize that, you know, Caitlin might not be her cup of tea, but she's not doing anything to hurt Cheryl Swoops. She admires Cheryl Swoops and the Maya Moores and the Sue Birds and the, 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 the legends that came before her. And I would dare say you can't find a soundbite, a soundbite this season of, of Caitlin Clark saying anything derogatory about anybody. She says, I don't care that she chatters on the floor. Class. Who doesn't? Yeah. She, I mean, uh, th- the great ones chattered, Bird, Magic, all of them. It's okay. That's a competitor. But, you know, I mean, for this woman, you know, to to be maligned, you shouldn't. You, you don't have to buy the number 22 jersey if you don't want it. But what you should do is applaud her for helping grow this sport that we have busted our ass for for the last 50 years. I mean, My Olympic team in 76 just got inducted last August. Some of my teammates thought they were going to die and never get recognized for being the first Olympic women's team. Julene Simpson, who was a co-captain with Pat Summit on that team. The people are starting to know who Julene, you know, people knew who Pat Summit was or Nancy Lieberman or Ann Myers, but they didn't know who Lucy was until Lucy died. And Trish Roberts and, and you know, Sue Roycewicz. And we had so many great players on that team. We just want to be recognized. And when the young players of today recognize, you know, the, the pioneers of the game, it's a thank you. And the pioneers and today's athlete should be saying to Angel Reese and to, you know, Asia and to, you know, you know, Jackie Young and all these great players. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you for winning that gold medal. Thank you for busting your behind on behalf of uh, America. And we stand and support you. But if you have a legend who's coming at a young player on the rise, it just, it's, it's not a good look. And, and Caitlin didn't start this. And I, I know Caitlin, she won't finish it. She'll just play ball. It seems to me in these matters, Stephen A is always on the right side of these arguments. Always on the right side of these arguments. Remember when it was Jerry Jones against everybody? Whose side was he on? Remember when it was uh, the president of the UFC? I can't remember his name right now. Against everybody? Whose side was he on? Remember when it was Deion Sanders versus Paul Bum? Whose side is he on? Stephen A. Always has to find himself on that side. All right. In this case, again, he's going at another black woman with all the vitriol. He can muster up all the strength and all the energy. And I've never seen him. Right, go at any woman of any other culture, ethnicity, or race with that kind of vigor, with that kind of strength. I've never, ever seen him. I, I've never seen him go at any, even man of any co- other culture, race, or whatever with that kind of energy also. All right, so... Like I pointed out, right, these past few weeks, Stephen A's been on one. Right, he went at Russell Wilson for nothing. For nothing at all. I mentioned before Russell Wilson is training camp. And he had five drives. That's it. Five drives in his first appearance. 
He didn't do so well. And he made nothing of it. Same Tom Brady would do the same thing. Make nothing of it. Right? You're not gonna bow your head down or or cry. Stephen A chose him a new one. Stephen A rips the hell out of him. Right? Now Deion Sanders ignores the commentator. Something that was inside of his contract. Rips him a new one too. Right now, Cheryl Swoops, she chooses to not talk about Caitlin Clark. She made a choice to not talk about Caitlin Clark. It's her choice. And she mentioned in a, in a Twitter post, Stephen A chooses to, to not talk about who he wants to talk about and talks about who he wants to talk about also on his show, like she did on her show. She also did on the broadcast. She made a choice. Stephen A. Rips are a new one. So, I don't know if you guys are seeing the pattern here. Because I'm seeing the pattern. Right? And I'm not seeing it apply to others. So, for me, there's a big question mark here. You know, and, and it was fast for him to bring on Nancy Lieberman. Is that her name, Lance, Nancy Lieberman? To to help him go at Cheryl Swoop, somebody who should be given the benefit of the doubt, given a little bit more respect than this. Huh? I mean, let's say she's even in the wrong. Give her a little space. But no, he wants to go in on her. For others, gives them a chance. No matter what it is. They could beat their wife. They could be racist. They could slander his friend. It don't matter. But just make sure that you don't do something against the side, the right side. All right. But uh, that's about it. So until next time.